Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Distress Call by Auburn Games. This game is for three to five players, is for ages 14 and up, and takes roughly 30 to 40 minutes to play. And in the game Distress Call, you are working as a forced employee at an alien galactic federation, attempting to bring cargo from one place to another, hoping to escape your uh, forced infinite employment and those of you who wish to quit early can be exited by the closest black hole or imploding star your objective is to reveal the stress calls place out cubes and put them into a bag or resources and then go and place them onto these specific shipping locations then you'll be taking them back with these storage containers hopefully as many as you possibly can and uh, after they've gotten back to base after three rounds you're going to open them up and see what's left and based on what you're trying to score the different types of cubes and colors, you will award yourself a point. And uh, if you can get two points by the end of the game, you will win. However, the rest of you guys are going to be forced to indenture some more permanent employment in the game Distress Call. I'll show you how to set the game up, how it's played, and of course our review. Setting up the game Distress Call is fairly simple. You will first shuffle the Distress Call deck, and then you are going to take three of the cards and place them face down next to each other, and uh, you can reveal the first one. Uh, the next thing that you're going to be doing is you're going to have give every single player a character, whether it be a robot smuggler, a crypto archaeologist, or a crypto warfare specialist, and there's a total of five different characters. And each of these characters have a very specific type of resource requirement on them. Then, give the player with the lowest number value on the bottom left of the card the Employee of the Moment badge. After that, you'll take all the cargo and separate them into their specific colors next to the board within reach of all players. Take out a number of space cargo based on the number of players, plus an extra golden cargo crate, and place them within reach of all players in a circular fashion. And the last thing you're going to do is you're going to take these shipping containers, which are A, B, and C, and place them next to the game board for use at the end of the round. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward setup. And the first phase of the round is to select the employee of the moment, which is going to be based on the number on the bottom left-hand side of the player card. The player who has the lowest number is the starting player. And for every round after the first, it will be the player who has the golden palette that will be assigned the employee of the month. The next thing that you're going to do is reveal a distress call card. You'll flip over one from the far left hand side and reveal it including the different types of, uh, of storage items which is going to be in cubes, uh, three red, two black, two uh, blue, three green, and uh, five tan. Uh, you're going to take all those from the main supply and put them in their own little supply and place them in this bag here. From there, the employee of the moment is going to take the cubes out of the bag one at a time and secretly uh, place them, starting with the golden palette, around the circle of the different palettes. And as you can see, there's going to be a different number of cubes that go onto each of these different palettes. After you've done arranging all of these cubes onto the palettes, uh, then you're going to move on to the next phase. Sorting cargo is also fairly easy. You'll have the employee of the moment select one of the cargos and then place that cargo in front of them. So you can select any one of these guys. And if you select the golden pallet, you'll be able to go uh, first again. Uh, the crypto archaeologist, first player, is going to go ahead and take that one though. And then it'll go clockwise. The uh, cyber warfare specialist will go ahead and take this one here. And then finally, the robot smuggler is going to end up with these guys here. After that, everyone has been assigned to their storage containers, and you will move on to the next phase. Securing cargo is fairly simple. You'll take out these different cargo containers and you'll place them down in front of all the players, the A, the B, and the C. And starting with the last player and going in the opposite direction, you will have each player select one of their cargo containers and place all of their cargo into one of the different containers. It can be any single one. It doesn't have to be the same one and it can be the same one if you would like. So the robot smuggler would have placed and then of course the cyber warfare specialist will get to place. And then finally the uh, crypto archeologist will get to place as well. And uh, as you notice, there's going to be one left over, which is also going to be assigned by the robot smuggler. It's the benefits of going last, getting to select another specific storage container and place these guys in. After you've done that, you'll check to see are the distress call cards all removed or faced up and been used? So basically three specific uh, phases of this one round. And if not, then these guys are going to go back onto the side and these tokens are going to go back as well. And the new first player is going to be the robot smuggler. In which case, you'll start by revealing the next distress call, taking the cubes from the supply pool and moving them over and putting them back in the bag and continuing. 
This will happen until all the cards have been revealed. And once they've all been revealed and all the containers have been filled, then you're going to move on to the last phase, which is going to be scoring. And scoring is pretty simple. You'll take these storage containers here and you're going to empty out their con contents. And the storage container with the most is going to be the storage container that is removed. Basically turbulence on the way getting back to the factory, maybe it was too full and it exploded, in which case all of these tokens are going to be going back to the void or to the abyss. And so will the storage container. And then finally, you will take all the cubes left from all the different containers and you're going to then reveal them. Now in this case, these would be what would be technically left, even though there should be technically more cubes, right? But you know, to save on brevity, I think you get the rounds. Uh, you're going to do check. Okay, so this player here scores four points for every single red cube here. In this case, he's only going to get four points at the end of this round if this was the total tally. Uh, the Cyber Warfare Specialist is going to get two points for every black and one point for every blue, which is going to be also four points. And then finally, this guy here is two points for every blue and one point for every green. So four, five, six, and seven points, in which case this player would win and if this is their second time winning the game is over and this player would win if not you'll simply rinse and repeat you put out three new ones face down and begin the phases again until somebody wins for the second time in the game distress call Distress Call is a fairly simple game. It's all about gathering resources and selecting them and then placing them into the cargo hold, trying to remember which ones have how many and what type, because you only care about your type to score points at the end of the game. But if you put a bunch of them in cargo holder A, and it's all your stuff, and it has the most cargo, it's going to be ejected, and only the victory points for B and C are going to count towards the end score. So you have to kind of be aware of what people are putting in. Yes, you might want to have the storage container that happens to have, uh, I don't know, uh, two red cubes for your character, the robot smuggler, but if somebody else has a storage container with four of these uh, teal ones, which are going to be worth no points to anybody, they might counteract the red cubes you would get by you placing them into the blue container, and so they would as well adding four extra cubes, which is nasty. So you have to kind of decide like, what's it worth and what should I gather? And of course the last player getting more is gonna be a value, but it's not gonna be usually the ones they want. <laughs> Selecting this uh, golden grate can be really nice as well, uh, but do you want to select it first when well, there's so many options? Or usually the last player is going to get it. It makes sense, and it balances itself out in that way. This is a cool memory game. It's kind of a uh, social game in, in terms as well. You're deciding like, okay, where did they place? What did they place? You, I sometimes will ask players, and you can never really believe anything they have to say, but uh, <laughs> it, it has a really nice little element to it where you're trying to keep your memory intact, but also trying to coordinate the colors that you want as well into the specific containers. Very simple, very straightforward. The game is pretty quick here, actually. This is probably one of the few games I've seen a prototype of that actually says 30 to 40 minutes, and it means 30 to 40 minutes. I think we played this game at four players, and it took us about half an hour to play the game. Uh, the artwork in the game is nice as well. The different characters are pretty cool. I mean, if you like the artwork on the main box, you're going to be um, enjoying the artwork as well and the different cards. The characters are fun and unique and interesting. Um, my favorite type of, the, uh, type of art is going to be on the display stress cards with all the different types of locations and the different types of elements that you're trying to gather in specific areas. It all works out very well. Um, I don't have a huge amount of negatives to say. I mean, if you don't like the like retro 90s type of artwork from like, you know, it's like a 90s style computerized artwork, then you might not like this artwork. Um, one thing I have to say is I'm not exactly sure uh, when players are placing their pallets into the machines. The do Does the player who has two of them do it at the same time? I think not. I think then that's how we played is we had them do one and then somebody else did one and somebody else did one, somebody else did one, and then finally they they did their last one. So they don't just put two in and dump them in. I think it has more of a strategic thing going on, but I could be wrong on the rules there as far as that goes. All the different characters have their own unique little twists and turns to them. It'd be kind of cool to see each of the characters have some type of additional ability as well that involve more than just the type of currency they are. As the game stands, it's a pretty simple, pretty straightforward game. There's not a huge amount of complexity to it. It's all about can you remember this and that, and also can you gather the right pieces into the right containers to get the points that you need. After three phases of one round, you'll check scoring, and if you can win two times, then you are going to be the ultimate uh, 
successor of not having to live in permanent servitude of an alien intergalactic race. Uh, the rulebook has some fun elements to it as well. The story is interesting and cute. I enjoyed this game. We had a lot of fun with it. It was pretty straightforward and e easily something that people would want to pick up again and play in my playgroup. Is this going to be a standing, lasting game for the people? Mm, I don't know. Modern gamers, maybe not, but for a family game, definitely so. This has a lot of potential and is a lot of fun. And I'm excited to see what they do with all the Kickstarter. But as it stands, a solid memory game with deduction, or d decision making skills, and choosing the right palettes and whatnot. I, I, I heavily enjoyed this stress call. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game, <laughs> Distress Call by Auburn Games. If you're interested in picking it up, there's a link down below in the description. It's on Kickstarter. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Check out our live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Twitch. We're moving it to Twitch. Um, and if you'd like, you can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. You know, ugh, man, I can't speak today. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button where you can see more of our videos here all the time. We do greatly appreciate it. It helps us out tremendously and keeps us making more Kickstarter content so you can see new games that published are published. Okay, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to not being sick with you next time.